Greetings, welcome to Super Start Select, the video games video show described by eminent industry analyst Michael Pachter as extremely unlikely this year, and by Luminary Games designer Tim Schafer as who is this, how did you get my number? Coming up, we've got yet another sparkling array of news and comment gems encrusted around the jewel in the Start Select crown, that is to say, the weekly feature. This week, we talked to Remedy about the soon-to-be-released Alan Wake follow-up, Alan Wake's American Nightmare. But not before the news, and here's the news. Here's a new snippet we're really pleased about. Journey, the mysterious, anonymously multiplayer desert adventure from the makers of PSN titles Flow and Flower, has gotten itself a release date. It's out March 13th in the US and 14th in Europe, announced that game company's Genova Chen in a PlayStation blog post. Continuing, our first game for PSN was Flow in 2007, a meditative zen video game haiku. We followed that in 2009 with Flower, our video game version of a poem about the tension between urban bustle and natural serenity. Journey, our third game, is an interactive parable, an anonymous online adventure to experience a person's life passage and their intersections with others. I, um, I like the bit where my, ma my magic scarf get longer. Next, if you're looking forward to seeing Mass Effect 3 landing on your doorstep at launch, you may find yourself lucky enough to have it, well, landing on your doorstep early. According to site USA Today, publisher Electronic Arts will be launching a select group of copies into the Earth's stratosphere by way of weather balloon, allowing the titles to fall back to Earth in what we are describing as Pleasure Rain or Hurricane Shepherd. Balloons will be launched next week from New York, San Francisco, Las Vegas, Berlin, London and Paris. Each of the copies will be fitted with a GPS tracker and they'll be trackable from MassEffect.com. So if you fancy picking yourself up some space swag and have a keen eye for map reading, you might find you're not just the first person to pick up one of these precious EA asteroids, you might also be among the first to play the game at all. As for the rest of us, we'll be holding out till March 9th here in Europe, March 8th in Australia, or March 6th in the US. Let's take a moment now to glance down the list of this week's hot new releases. In case you are hankering after a new purchase, whether in the form of a digital download or lasered onto a shiny plastic disc and jammed into a jewel case. First up, there's shirtless Fighting Man Simulator UFC Undisputed 3, latest in the series of MMA games, which garnered an excellent 8.0 in our review. It was praised there for its skillful new submission system, comprehensive tutorials and improved career mode. Says our reviewer Justin Calvert, it's a significantly more accessible game than its predecessors, so you don't need to know a reverse mount from a rear mount to enjoy it, which is mm, good for us. Then there's Warp out on Xbox Live Arcade. It's a puzzle-based stealth action number in which you play a teleporting alien critter trapped in a lab where they appear to have brought in the same decorators as Aperture Science. You've got to sneak your way past armed guards to freedom by warping in and out of items and people. Also, you can make people explode from the inside, much like a frog in a microwave, uh, we imagine. Finally on PC, there's Aviation Extinguishment Excitement in Airport Firefighter Simulator at last. Now it's time to talk to Remedy, the makers of Alan Wake, about Alan Wake's American Nightmare. And to set the mood, we can... Right, and also... Ta -da. What's that? It's my torch. But it's so little. Well, on short notice, it's all I could, all I could come up with. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see yours. Um, I, uh, I didn't really... Really? Want... Really? Now that, that's puny, come on. It's not the length of the torch, it's the size of the battery. Which is dictated by the length of the torch. It's got lithiums. Ah, my retinas. Seared like tuna steak. I'm gonna tell you a secret. There are places in our world where fiction and dreams can come true. These places are a battlefield in a war between the powers of light and darkness. In 2010, Remedy's psychological thriller Alan Wake took us to a town named Bright Falls. There we did battle with shouty shadow men and chased a trail of loose manuscript pages in search of the missing Mrs. Wake. Now we rejoin Alan in a different place, time, reality and also format. This is Alan Wake's American Nightmare, a downloadable standalone spin-off of the original game. 
We talked to Remedy's Director of Franchise Development, Ascari Hakkinen, about what to expect. Okay, so the events of uh, American Nightmare happen after Alan Wake. Um, and Alan Wake has learned a lot since we saw him last. Um, you know, in Alan Wake, kind of fiction was in a way dictating uh, things that were happening in that game to him. Now, Wake has learned to use fiction to his advantage, and we're seeing that in the gameplay as well. In American Nightmare, Alan faces a host of new enemies, like giant spiders and big burly dudes with circular saws, but chief among them is Mr. Scratch. I need you to tell me what you know about him. Now, Mr. Scratch came about after the events of the first game. Now, as we know, uh, in Wake's world, fiction can come real. Um, and after the dust had settled in Bright Falls, uh, the locals started to speak and created this urban legend of Alan Wake, a rock star writer that came to their small town and brutally murdered his wife. Now, we know that that didn't happen, but um, that's how Mr. Scratch was born. Now, Mr. Scratch is a supernatural serial killer on his way to do horrible things to Wake's wife and Wake's trying to stop him. Do you know the real difference between us? I'm not afraid to be the center of attention. Well, the backstory goes that early on in Wake's career, he had written several episodes of this TV show, Night Springs, that was seen in the first game. And it had this kind of Twilight Zone feel. The man before you is a champion of light, an experienced traveler of the unknown, well used to navigating dreams and nightmares alike. Now, in Alan Wake's American Nightmare, you're playing an episode of Night Springs and it's written by Alan Wake himself. So again, he's using uh, fiction uh, to his advantage now. In the game, there's the story-based single-player adventure about five hours long, we're told, and an all-new arcade survival mode called Fight Till Dawn. In all, it's a more action-focused, less subtle offering than the first game. But why? And how does Remedy explain that Alan is suddenly an oozy, toting action hero? We didn't feel that it would have felt right for Alan Wake, um, you know, a writer. He's not a commando or a space marine that could all of a sudden be wielding a machine gun. So we had to keep it grounded in reality. Um, but after reading these kind of comments to go a little bit uh, more action focused, we kind of white boxed out these arcade levels and we threw in wild en enemies and wild weapons. and. You know, soon enough we were playing it at the office and we're like, this is a ton of fun, this would be a perfect fit for Xbox Live Arcade. Um, until Sam Lake, uh, our lead writer of course, steps in and says, you know, fine, but I need to think about how this fits into the Alan Way universe. Um, so goes away, comes back and, and, you know, has come up with the idea that we can use the in-game TVs from the first game, Night Springs, which had a Twilight Zone uh, feel to it, um, to of course, wrap it in that and everything can be wilder, everything can be weirder in the enemies and the weapons because it's framed as an episode of Night Springs. The first Alan Wake game wore its pop culture influences on its sleeve, drawing heavily on the work of Stephen King for one. American Nightmare steps away from King's brand of horror and turns to a set of pulpy Americana inspirations. So we lend from popular culture, we tip our hats um, in Alan Wake for instance um, to some of the greats. Uh, Stephen King, Lynch. In Anna Wake's American Nightmare, uh, some of our influences are Quentin Tarantino and From Dust Till Dawn. So there's a different vibe and different feel there. So that's American Nightmare out on February 22nd for Xbox Live Arcade in a nutshell. But for a second bonus round, we put your most pressing questions to Ascari. Uh, unfortunately not. You will. You'll see some familiar characters. Uh, of course, Alice Wake, uh, Wake's wife, and Barry is back. Now, Barry has been a little bit lost since Wake uh, went missing, and he needed to find something to do uh, as he couldn't be the agent of Alan Wake anymore. So he's now the manager and agent of the Old Gods of Asgard, the uh, band from Alan Wake, and they're back with a new single as well. Yes, there will definitely be a ton of optional story content in there to expand the story in the universe of Alan Wake in the form of manuscript pages, radio shows, TV shows, uh, more dialogue with the NPCs and so forth. That's a very good question and the first time that anyone's actually asked me that. Um, actually not. We won't be having any more fiction 
within fiction, within fiction. Uh, the TVs are there, but actually it's Mr. Scratch that is sending messages to Alan Wake through the TVs. That's a very good question. Um, and I have nothing to announce on it yet. That's a great question as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that what people want? A lot of people like Barry. We love Barry as well. Um, we'll see. Uh, we've just got some um, <laughs> merchandise ideas to pitch at you because your biography says you're the man we can pester with book, movie, games and merchandise ideas. Right. So yes or no will do uh, whether you think it's a viable um, merchandising option. So Alan Wake branded thermos flasks. Oh, uh, no. Uh, Alan Wake Rise and Shine instant coffee granules. Interesting. I actually thought about it at one point, but no. Alan Wakey Wakey alarm clock. Very good idea. Possibly. Alan Wake me up pep pills. Pet pills, oh, that could be dangerous, especially if uh, it hurts people. Oh, you don't want to be associated with Yeah, I don't want to be associated with that. I say no. Alan Wake rechargeable batteries. Oh, that's a very good idea. Yeah. Um, but no. Alan Wake's American nightwear pajama range. Nightwear. Very good. Possibly. I like that. Barry Wheeler talking action figure with real light-up action. Yes, I want that. I want that. I really want it. We want that too. Uh, Alan Wake's writer's block, which is a wooden block that holds pens. <laughs> awesome idea. Uh, Can Al I steal that? Yeah, yeah, Thank that's you. yours. Uh, Alan Wake nail gun and accessories. Um, yeah, I dangerous mean, dangerous again. Yeah, very dangerous. And maybe if Nerf came on board, and you know, you had those <sighs> kind of foam nails. Right, fake foam possibly. nail gun. Right. Alan Wake boarding water sports accessories. Oh, um, a lot of gamers that do a lot of water sports. It's not a lot of overlap there. No, All not right, really. We'll, All right, we'll put that on the maybe pile. Uh, Alan know. Wake's funeral parlor. No one does wakes like Alan does wakes. <laughs> a whole funeral parlor. Yeah. Branded. Niche yes. again. Very niche. Everyone needs funerals. Everybody eventually. does. Maybe we could do that just in uh, hometown. Right. Uh, Mr. Scratch and Sniff scented draw liners. <laughs> Let's say no. As ever, we roll along into the comments section in which we share a choice selection of your always appreciated feedback, whether on the news, on the show, or on my youthful energy and smooth, hairless knuckles. Let's kick off with Yuri Y, who's none too happy with Blizzard's move to block Valve's nabbing of the Dota name. He or she says, what? If Blizzard delays Dota 2 release, they are dead to me. To be honest, Valve will probably do a better job with graphics and story, while Blizzard will do a better job with gameplay because of experience. But if the maker of Dota 2 really did join with Valve, then it would probably be better. And um, so, yeah. Blizzard, you stay away. Or you're dead to him. You got that? Dead. And then on to GameSpot user Steel Penguin 90 who knows how Bioware should continue the Mass Effect series after wrapping up Shepard's trilogy with ME3. ME4 should be Shep's son, and what race the child is should be based on the romance in the previous games. Maybe an evil half-brother, sister, genetic freak. Yeah, so what if Red Dead Redemption did it? Jack Marston for the win. Come on, you dumb While on the subject of rumours the next Xbox might be getting a touchscreen controller, Matt989 says, I don't think next Xbox will have touchscreen, think it already have Kinect, and it's almost certain there will be a 2.0 version of Kinect of it. And touchscreen TVs and TVs with cell phone support are almost here and will only get cheaper. What's the point? Well, indeed, Matt. Like-minded commenter I like space ads only, I personally think it feels like a touch too much. Uh, we've we've written worse. I think it feels like a touch, a touch too much. Like we haven't. Who knew? Finally, user Scrober tells us, I'm always genuinely bummed when there are no outtakes. Still love you guys. Man, well, like we said to our mothers, we hate to disappoint someone who loves us. You want to do some outtakes after this? Yeah, all right. I mean, since he says he loves us mm. and everything, we'll think of something. Uh, you want to sign off first? Sure, why not? That's all from us for one more week, game lovers and lovers of games. Thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time. <sighs> all right, let's do this. Right. That's not your coffee, that's my coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. mm. Greetings, welcome to Super Shot Select. <laughs> I'll take. I'm sorry, I'll, yeah, I'll, take. I'll do that again. Greetings, welcome to Superstars Erect. 
Oh no way! Oh, <laughs> oh no, oh, Danny. Sorry, Danny. From the top. And now it's time for the video game news. No! <laughs> oh, oh, you! Danny. Every time. Oh, every time. <laughs> every week. How did you notice I wasn't over here? <laughs> You're dead to him. You. No! <laughs> Oh. There's paper everywhere. Oh, script. oh how are we going to oh. pick this all up? Oh. Greetings, welcome to stupid. Tom's. <laughs> Greetings, welcome to stupid Tom Selleck. Oh, that's not right. That's uh. that's next week. Welcome to Soupy Stars Eject. It's not even close. No supper salmon. Super Sars salad. See. Check shirts. Alan Wake, get it? Yeah. We had a purpose. plan for that. Yeah, this isn't accidental, yeah. like usual. We're not just dicks. You are. Hey, and thanks for watching Start Select with us. If you want to watch some more, why not click up here? That one. Yeah. Or for more from GameSpot, to subscribe to GameSpot. In fact, you can click up here. Mm -hmm. and, and there's another third mystery video. We don't know what it is. No, we never do. Who knows do. what it is? We still don't know. Click here. Yep. <sighs> I think I prefer your shirt. I like yours. Can I swap? Let's do swapsies. Okay. Cool, I like that. It's tiny!